Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to go over ANET A6 upgrades, the final edition. So stay tuned. First off, thank you guys so much. 300 subscribers. That's an amazing feat for me. I just started doing this for, um, for shits and giggles. And now, you know, this is actually starting to be a thing. So I'm happy about that. I hope I'm helping somebody out. That's all I ever set out to do. Okay, so one of my latest updates has been this uh, ramps board. This has DRV8825 drivers. The reason why I changed to a ramps 1.4 board is because the ANET board, the extruder driver, died in it. I had ordered this this ramps board kind of as a backup. I mean, it wasn't a day after I ordered it that my, my ANET board crapped out. Okay, so those of you that have followed me along in, in my, my upgrade series, part one and part two, ANET A6 fun upgrades, um, you've seen some of the other stuff I do, which I'm going to cover in this, in this video, but I want to get to my latest upgrades first and then get to my other upgrades later. The most recent upgrade is this Ramps 1.4 board. The reason for that, the reason for upgrading this is that the Z driver on the ANET board, as you can see right here, this is the uh, Z motor driver and it drives two motors. Well it burned out, it overheated and I'm not sure why. So I ordered a ramps kit from Amazon. I'm going to post a link in the description. It was fairly inexpensive. I think it was $30, $35 with DRV8825 drivers. You can see the drivers right in there. And it came with a new LCD screen. You can't reuse the old LCD screen. It also came with an Arduino Mega clone. This is, you know, it's Chinese clone stuff. So I didn't have a fan blowing on this, this old ANET board here. So I installed the fan here, and you can kind of see that it's just attached to the side of my plexiglass here. But it works off of this power supply right here. Now, the other upgrade that I've done, I'm going in descending order. The next thing I did was install this Raspberry Pi and Octoprint. And this has been a great addition. I love it. With this, I can, I can print right from Cura 3.0. I can just push print to Octoprint. It sends the files to Octoprint and I can monitor them on my web browser. It's awesome. It is simply awesome. And while we're on this side, people have seen the MOSFETs. I installed a MOSFET for the bed and a MOSFET. I don't know if you can see that back there. That's the MOSFET for the um, extruder. I have silicone wires going to the heat bed. And why don't, we, uh, why don't we go to the heat bed and I can show you what I did with that. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, well, first of all, I use a glass bed now. I use exclusively a glass bed. I have three pieces of glass that I exchange. So when I'm really in a printing frenzy, I don't have to worry about scraping stuff off. I can just pull this piece of glass off Put another piece of glass on and keep on printing. The printer doesn't even have time to cool off. That is awesome. And depending on the material that I'm printing with, I, uh, I coat this with either hairspray, glue stick, uh, PVA glue, which is like Elmer's glue with 50-50. I still have this build tack on here, a build tack like substance. It sticks like crazy, and if I get another piece, which I might, I'll probably um, just stick it to a piece of glass. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this off. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but on the heat bed, no more springs. Springs are gone. I made some spacers, and I I just stuck them in there, and that's it. And I can do that because I have an automatic bed leveling. 
I have bed insulation under the bed. And this is like an aluminum backing kind of soundproofing heat shield for inside of a car interior. And it keeps 99% of the heat under there. Or what I really wanted to show you, and geez, I hope I can get this in this video here. If you can see this. What I did is I took the four pin connector, I cut out the two edge pins, and then there's two pins coming off the board. A lot of people solder right to the board, and I didn't see a reason to do that. What I did was I left the connector there and I took the two pins. Let's say these are the two pins sticking out of the board. I closed them together like this, and then I soldered the wire to it like that. You can't really do it with a soldering iron because this heat plate acts as a giant heat sink. You need a mini torch to do it. Something like this. I got this one at Harbor Freight. But this works great for solder, something that sucks the heat away really quickly. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so the next thing I did was I did this whole carriage upgrade. This is a uh, carriage that I designed. It has an E3 DV6 inside of it. It has this Titan extruder, and it also has the BL Touch. Um, I designed this carriage myself, and it is on Thingiverse. I'm gonna post links in the description for the, for the carriage modification. I'm also gonna post links for the BL Touch, only get a genuine BL Touch, and a Titan Extruder, only get a, a genuine Titan Extruder. Now you don't have to buy the whole Titan Extruder with the motor and all that. You can buy just the actual, this actual uh, Titan Extruder without the motor. And then I have a clone E3DV6, which you can't really see here, let me see if I can get you to at least take a peek of where it might be located. Well, it's in here. It's in behind this fan here. And it, basically, it mounts directly to this E3DV6, comes out. Okay, other things. This X carriage mount. People have followed me on my other videos saw this. I added this. A simple threaded rod brace that goes from this front here to the back, directly below where the belt tension is. Here's my little video camera for my Octoprint, so I can monitor my printing anywhere that has an internet connection. Not only can I monitor it, but I can actually control the printer from there. It's awesome. I highly recommend Octoprint. I'm gonna put a link in the description for that. I'm gonna put a link in the description for the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna put a link in the description for this Logitech C270 camera also. Here's the LCD screen that came with the uh, Ramps 1.4 package. Other things that I've done that people have seen in my previous videos. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna link those in the description. This is the original power supply. This power supply only powers up the heat bed and the uh, hot end. That's it. This power supply powers the board and the stepper drivers. These ANET power supplies are a little bit underpowered for powering the heated bed and the board and all that. The voltage drops way down if you're using only this power supply. So I decided to use this power supply just to power the heat bed and the hot end. This one powers the motherboard and the steppers. And what a difference, it really smooths things out. As you can see, this enclosure here, I've had this almost from the very beginning. I print nylon with this, with this setup now without any problems. With the E3DV6, and the Titan extruder, the insulation on the heat bed, 
I have no problems printing nylon. That was one of my goals with this printer. I've also been wanting to print flexible filaments. And this is the reason why I went with a direct drive extruder rather than a Bowden setup. The Bowden setups, you cannot print flexible filaments with it. Okay guys, so that basically concludes my ANET A6 upgrades. That's probably gonna be it. If I, up, if I do upgrade the frame on this, I will definitely make a video about it. And I am thinking about it. I am thinking about actually cutting out a uh, steel frame on my CNC plasma cutter to retrofit this printer. But I'm kind of reluctant to do that until I get another printer. I would lo love to have another 3D printer. The funds are just not there right now. So I, gotta, I just gotta live with what I got. And the only reason why I wanna be able to uh, have another 3D printer is because I do quite a bit of 3D printing. And if this one's tied up when I'm changing the frame out, I'm kind of screwed. So that may or may not happen in the very near future. I'm also planning a Hypercube Evolution printer. And uh, I know I talked about it a little bit in some of my other videos. And uh, I'm also gonna do that one a little bit differently. I'm gonna weld up a steel frame on that printer rather than use uh, the aluminum extrusions. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, a, st a welded steel frame is gonna be a lot stiffer. But two, it's, go it's gonna be a lot cheaper. Money is tight. I don't know how it is for you guys, but you know, for me, money's tight. And I like to do things cheap. Even if I had the money, I like to do things cheap. If you're interested in purchasing any items that I featured in this video, I'm gonna have links in the description down below. They are affiliate links. It helps me out if you guys buy through there. It doesn't cost you an extra penny. It doesn't cost you a dime. But if you use those affiliate links down below, they send me a few bucks. It's not a lot of money, but it's something. If you guys find this video helpful, Show your appreciation by using the affiliate links down below. If you find these videos helpful, please subscribe so you get notified every time I post a video. Smash the like button and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.